So then let's let's move on to what does it mean to be safe in this situation as a as a leader that's working with children and families. Cindy, why don't you get us started with that convert that part? Sure. So I think safety, obviously there's physical safety, but I think in terms of helping people with grief, I want to be emotionally safe for them, um, for both kids and parents who are grieving. And so I think a lot of this happens just in how we talk to people. Um, and so we show safety to children and their families by allowing them to talk about their loved one who died. Sometimes they just want to talk about them. And so I think we can encourage that by asking questions about their loved one, asking, what was he like? What did you like uh, doing with them? Um, And then as they express their emotions, um, just validating those emotions, um, you know, saying things like, you know, it sounds like you're really struggling with this, or maybe you're struggling getting out of bed in the morning, or you really missed your brother and you're so sad that he died. Um, And so expressing empathy, but I think also being careful that unless you've experienced that loss yourself, you can't say, I know what you feel like. And so I think we want to be careful about saying things like that. Um, But you can say things like, I imagine that is very hard to deal with. Um, I think we also show safety by answering kids questions in an honest and developmentally appropriate manner. Sometimes, you know, we don't want to say the word died or death. And so people say things that can be very confusing to kids, like he passed away, or I'm sorry, you lost your brother, or saying things like, you know, he's an angel in heaven now. You know, instead, we just need to say things like, I'm sorry to hear your brother died. You know, don't be afraid to use those those real words. So let's talk a little bit about how to support grieving families in a really tangible way. And um, so, Stacey, I'd like to start with you. What are ways that have been helpful or that you would recommend for ministry leaders? I tell people all the time, take care of the practical needs. Um, If you're dealing with, you know, a grieving parent, whether they're grieving the death of a child or the death of their spouse, you know, listen, they may not remember to buy toilet paper. So you could just buy toilet paper and take it to them, right? You could clean their bathroom. You could offer to do their laundry. My, I remember Saturdays, I would just sit our dirty laundry out on my porch and it would come back clean. Um, And it was just this beautiful thing, remembering that even when parents are grieving, they want to be there for their kids. And if the burden of all of the rest of life is so great, it limits their ability to be there for their kids. And so taking care of things for the parents allows them to be free to be with their children and their children's grief even more. And so um, that can look like a, a million things, but um, offering, you know, you, you have a widow at church and you can tell she's got a really busy work week saying, Hey, can I bring you a meal on Thursday? It seems like you have a really busy week. Can I just cook for you this week? Or, you know, it looks to me like your car needs some repairs. How are you financially? Could we bring, could we collect some money so that you don't have to take on extra shifts at work and you can be there for your children? You know, things like that are, are so meaningful. And I think they, Um, I tell people all the time, this is what it means for the church to allow a grieving person to feel like God is actually near because you are taking, you are the hands and feet of, of God words that say, oh, but God is faithful. Oh, but sometimes they can be helpful. But what's really helpful is when God's people come in and take care of today's needs. Um, those things showed me so much that God was with me because he was in the people that were actually taking care of getting us toilet paper and making sure we were fed. Um, Cindy, how about in a church or a school setting? Um, what are some tangible ways that we can support children in that setting? Yeah, so oftentimes when parents are grieving, maybe they been a loss of a family member, a parent, or a child. Um, other children 
tend to get lost in the shuffle. And so I think it's helpful for churches and schools to, to come alongside that child. Maybe they can have their class write handwritten sympathy cards to their classmate. Um, that also, by the way, helps the other children in the class to learn how to minister to others who are grieving. Um, and then you and as a teacher, or maybe another teacher could hand deliver those cards to that child with a stuffed animal or another small gift. And I think just visiting that child would mean the world to those parents and maybe even offer to take that child away for a few hours. Obviously, you would want two adults for safety reasons, but take them out for ice cream or invite them over to your house for a play date. And I think just providing that type of support for the children also indirectly supports the parents who just may not have the bandwidth to do that for their own children and can give them a few hours of, of not having to think about their mm. own children.